just 15 minutes, so I just want to share, well, my own little experience, you know, some things just to share with the, um, with the mothers. Our sister has said a lot, and one of the things I want us to be, particularly the sisters, is that really, the Bible says, a wise woman builded her home. The place of the children and the upbringing, you have the majority um, share in doing the work. You have to do much. And the, few, the short time I have, I just wanted to share some experiences and some of the things that I feel are so critical in this time. Please let us be aware that these children, they are exposed to so much. The challenges they are having is more than in our own time. What they are they may, some of them, you know, they go to the internet, things just pop up. So many things. So one of the things I, I believe is very important, our sister has touched it. You, know, you need to be close to your children. You need to know your children. You need to know their challenges. You need to know their friends. You need to know what disturbs them. You know that at times they can hide what, you know, some of the things they are going through. If you're not close enough, and I, I sympathize with a lot of us who are working mothers, but we must make out that time. Either you have a time, maybe it's your time, maybe you set out a time once in a week to call your, that, your daughter or your son and say, what are the challenges you're having? You must make out time to find out what is going on in their life. There was a time when my children were still in secondary school. I remember one day I came and I just saw, I just saw one of them come out and I thought she was cleaning her eyes, and I went into her room, I peeped, and she quickly pretended that she's nothing. I said, what's not? She said, nothing, nothing. I kept quiet. I went back to my room. I prayed. I knew something was wrong. I called her. She said, tell me what is wrong. You can tell me, whatever it is. And then she started saying how, oh, she didn't have friends. Maybe her senior ones is somebody who makes a lot of friends. She didn't have friends, whoever she thought was. You know, she said, that because I took out the time to try and find out what was going on, and I prayed with her. I said, you will, God will give you. You will be a good friend and you will have good friends. And after, from that time, I started praying for each one of them. Lord, give them good godly friends and make them good influences, good friends to other people. And I will always try to find out who are your friends. There were some that I will, they will come to the house. I said, invite them. When they come, I'll say, this person cannot continue. They will, one of them will ask, Please, can she come? Can they come to the house? I said, no, they can't. And then she said, why? I said, because there's nobody in your house. Because that particular friend, the mother is always in America. In, she stays alone. When she comes to the, her place, she will stay the whole day. When the, the person, who, her nanny comes and says, come home, she would talk to her in such a way. And I said, that's not the way to talk to your... She would just, you know, after a while, I talked to my daughter. I said, this person, I hope she will not influence you. Do you see the way talks, that's not the way she should. Gradually on her own, she grew. You need to know who your children's friends are. You need to know what are the things troubling them. Sometimes they may feel, mommy is too, you know, they say we're old school. They are too old school. You may not understand. But you may need to come down to their level and try to find out what is going on in their lives. And or sometimes get some friends, you know, some of the younger brethren, younger sisters who you think they can relate with. If you find, feel that you cannot find out what is wrong, because many a times, like our sister is saying, many a times we do not discover the problem until it's too late. When my, one of my children were, you know, when uh, they were still in secondary school, at a time I noticed a change. Something changed. I just noticed it. I couldn't put my fingers on it. And she'll come, she'll go into her room, she'll, and I wondered what was going on. I know my husband and I, we discussed it. I said, I don't know what is going on with this girl and all that. Okay, we decided to call her to pray with her and all that. And then her demeanor changed. So when we came to pray and um, my husband was now telling her, you see, you're making your mother very upset. Your mother is upset. And her face was just straight like that. And I was saying, Lord, what is this? And the Lord just started ministering to me. Did I train you in warfare in this thing for you to allow the enemy? In fact, the Lord just started talking to me because she was so, I just saw, so, it was as if something else. I couldn't, I couldn't reach her. And I, I just started responding to the Lord. I started praying. I was crying. I said, Lord, 
as long as there's breath in me, the devil cannot. And I started, I was just talking to the Lord and praying. She just dropped on the, on the floor and started weeping. She wept for, no one can tell you, up to an hour. Uh, uh, started weeping. I'm sorry, mommy, I'm sorry. She wept. It was as if something just left. And she was a changed person. Actually, when they get to school, they're exposed to so many spirits. Brethren, if we don't pick up in time, I just didn't know, but I knew something was wrong. You know? And the Lord helped us, and we realized it was a spirit, and we just ministered to her. And from then, she changed. Even her academics, we noticed she was going, everything changed. So if we're not close enough, we don't monitor what is going on. We may not be able to help. Sometimes I don't think they themselves even understand when something is going on. So I think, brethren, one of the things I will advise for us mothers, we need to be very prayerful. We need to be very prayerful. When we notice things, we do not ask God. And then one of the things I try, if you ask all my children and all those who've lived with me, I try to, from a very early age, once they say they know the Lord, next thing I try to tell you, to tell, teach them, learn to hear from God. If they come and tell me, I say, what is God? Say, Even when they're making mistakes, and they say, this is what God is. I say, are you sure? Go and ask God again. Because it's very important that they learn from an early age to be able to recognize God's voice. To know what is. Because I tell them, we might not be there. So when you're in a trouble, when your mommy and your daddy are not there, you have to learn to ask God. You have to learn that the Holy Spirit is your helper. These are one of the things I believe we need to teach our children from very young. They must learn to hear God. So if they don't have the Holy Spirit, that's the problem. So the world, first thing we need to do as they re repent, please let them, you know, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let them be baptized. I used to tell them, God doesn't have grandchildren. You're either God's child or you're not God's child. And then, you know, I was concerned for quite a while. My son said he's born again. And I, I never, when we pray, I've never seen him pray in tongues and all that. And I kept on praying. I kept on praying for him. One of the days, I was not feeling well. I was very ill. And my husband had gone. We were supposed to go to the farm, but I wasn't ill. I wasn't well. So he went alone. And then I started having these serious cramps. He was the only one in the house. So he ran in. And he was, I was, because for, he had never seen me in pain like that. I'm hardly ever seen He had never. So he, he called his father. I was calling his father. Next thing I had him speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. I said, Lord, if only for this, you allow this illness, I'm happy. Because I wanted to be convinced. Brethren, these are some of the things we need to be, we need to be burdened if our children say they are born again and they are not spirit filled. They can't hear God. So whenever they come and they want to make a decision, they tell, they tell us, we tell them, what, what do you think God is saying? Sometimes they may be wrong, but we need to make sure they learn to connect and, you know, make a decision. When, uh, about, when my, my son finished, in, he was in Abuja and he finished and he said, oh, he wants to work there. We didn't feel that was right because we hadn't, we just felt, we couldn't tell what was going on with him spiritually. So we told him we felt he should come back since he hasn't got a job. He said, no, no. We told him, this is not what we're receiving. He said, he too received. You know, when we tell them to receive, and they say they receive, you have a problem because you have to allow them. You cannot tell them. You told them to hear from God, and they're telling they're hearing God. And then you now tell them, so you have to now pray that God will show them that they didn't receive properly. And several times we've had that, and it has worked. I remember when my, my daughters, they said they wanted to go to boarding house. We said, we don't feel this is what God wants you to do. They felt, in fact, they even sent their auntie to come and persuade. So I called them. I said, you know us. You don't persuade us. We want to do what we feel the Holy Spirit is saying. So you don't need to persuade us. Let's all pray. Let God convince us. If it's God saying that you should go to boarding school. If it's not, let God convince you. And within two weeks, I think... It was clear. God convinced them that we didn't. They were, and everybody kept quiet. They didn't disturb us about again, about that again. Because we tried to let them know that we want to see, we want to hear God. We want to do God's will. They need to know from an early age what is God saying. Brethren, that is what this whole divine order is all about. To hear God and know what God is saying. So when my son said, oh, he said he doesn't feel, we said, okay. If in one year, you don't get a regular job, 
Will you believe that God is saying you should come back to Lagos? We agreed. And at one year, he started packing his things. He came back. On our knees, we brought him back to Lagos. You, on your knees, you can't, you know, because it gets to a particular age. What I'm saying, I'm talking about some of us who have older children. There's a time you cannot begin to tell them what to do. You cannot be forcing them. You have to. I tell people that on my knees, I, I control what happens. We will start praying. And if the door we feel that they, they want to enter is not, we start praying. And that door will close. And they will come back and say, oh, I don't think this was God. You know, um, some of you know when she didn't, when she decided to go to Ilori, by the time she missed the first, um, the first um, admission, there was a problem. By the time she was going, I said to her, I'm receiving that this thing that has skipped and skipped. Maybe God is saying, look elsewhere, change. She said, no, 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 no. I said, okay. Let's pray about it. Pray about it. She said, oh, she has, that's what she believed. I said, fine. Pray, brethren, at times you allow them to make their own mistakes in discovering the will of God, in hearing God. They may make mistakes. We made mistakes, didn't we? But we will be praying along. We'll be praying along. So eventually she went. We gave her a blessing. She went. One of the days she called me. She was crying. Mommy, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. I said, okay, come home. You see, they have to find out from God. And one of the things, I just have a first shot and I'm rounding up. I just feel to pass across to us mothers. Please, let us start from once they say they, they are Christians, they are born again. To teach them, to help them to understand, to hear God, to understand God's direction. I tell them God can never, the Holy Spirit can never lead you astray. So, find out from the Holy Spirit what the time is, what you're supposed to do. Even if you make a mistake, go back to God. But try to hear God. You must hear God. And when you start hearing God, it makes things easier, even for us. When there's a challenge and we're not reaching a crossway, because when they are, I'm talking about now, our sister talked about, when they are now teenagers and going, you have to, you know, dialogue. You have to talk with them. And they have to know that the will of God is the final determination of what to be done. Praise the Lord. Lord, I, don't, I just want to just say one, one or two things, just to prime up some things. There are also some things I feel as mothers and as parents, we owe our children. We owe them care. We owe them consistency. We, we owe them consistency. We owe them education to let them know that the choices they make today, every choice they have, make has consequences. We must let them know the consequences. And I just want to say something that before I go, I know the time is up. The children look up to their parents so much. Whether they tell you or not, whether they tell you or not, they are looking, you are their role model. They are watching you. You're teaching them. They are learning from how they see you behave. If you're somebody who, you, who's, who shouts a lot and you're prone to beating or hitting people at the earliest time, you'll not be surprised if your child is always shouting and behaving that way. Please let us realize that our children uh, look up to us. They watch us more closely. So if you want your child, if you want the good qualities in your child, like honesty, respect, let them see you as the parent exhibiting those qualities. Let them see you diligent. Let them see you hardworking. Let them see you praying when you have a challenge. Let them see you being courteous to people, even people who they, you think they are below you. That's why some children, they talk to Maybe they are nannies anyhow. Let them see the kind of behavior we want in, in them. Let them see it in us. That, I just live with one thing that happened. When we traveled, we traveled um, when my husband was trying to recover. I we went to the UK to just rest a little while. And I told my grandson, he was just five years old. I said, Chisa, please don't disturb because he was very boisterous. 
Don't disturb grandpa too much. Grandpa is trying to recover. He said, yes. Yes, grandma. Uh, yes, grandma. I, I, grandpa was very sick. He almost died. I said, how do you know? Then, mommy was praying everywhere. In the kitchen, you'll be praying. In the toilet, she'll be praying. She was praying. She, she was so shocked. She didn't know that this boy had been watching her. When she's in the kitchen, in the toilet, she'll be praying. In the kitchen, she'll be praying. But grandma, grandpa will not die. And this boy was watching. And when he was telling that story, you know, I was just saying, I wish parents understood how the children watch their parents. They watch what they do. So maybe if he has a challenge too, he will think, okay, let me also pray that way. So the things we want to inculcate in our children, let them see us living it. Our life is the first education. We can teach them and talk and talk. But how are we behaving? How do we behave? We may think they're not observing. They are very observant. Please, let us model the way we want them to be. If we want them to be honest people, let them see us as very honest. If they want us to, if we want them to be diligent, let, us, let them see us diligent. Let them see us courteous. Let them see us generous, benevolent. And you see them that, oh, they'll, they'll, see, they'll go to school. Ah, mommy, I gave my child, one of my children, I gave my child my, at my lunch. I didn't eat anything because that child didn't have any food because they are seeing their mother doing it. So the things that we are doing impacts a lot also them. Praise God. I don't have much time to talk. Praise God.